Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Well, having spent more than 25 years advising clients about technological change, the current rate of advancement in this area means that it's a very exciting time for Lawrence Fisi from SIA Partners. Lawrence joins us now to share his advice for embracing new technologies within a business setting. Lawrence, let's start by getting an introduction to SIA Partners. Thank you, Carl, and a very good morning to yourself and your listeners. Sure. I'm one of the founders of SIA Partners business here in Ireland. We set up the business, a colleague of mine, Gary O'Sullivan, and myself and a couple of other colleagues back in 2006. We were originally known as Pathfinder, and we built a business to a team of in excess of 60 people. And then in the middle of 2020, we became part of an international firm called SIA Partners, headquartered out of France. And at this stage, that business has grown rapidly since it was founded 25 years ago. And our business is now part of a global business, a single team, 3,000 staff, 19 countries, full range of management consulting services, strongly grounded in applying technology to solve business problems. And what's unusual about SIA Partners is it wasn't founded firstly as an accounting firm or indeed as a technology firm that most of the consulting firms actually become a branch out of. You're very right. That's very much the case. We recognise the gap in the market. First of all, the internet was really starting to make a dramatic breakthrough in how people worked, how companies served their customers. And very much we could see that this was going to continue to accelerate and would really drive the, the futures to kind of how industry and uh, the future of work. So we also saw that the way that traditional firms had been based and delivered services, they were either tightly tied to particular proprietary technology, so they would be very committed to their own uh, particular software, and we could see a trend moving to where the underlying software brands were less important, and more important was applying that software innovatively and imaginatively to fix business problems. So that was one thing that we saw, which would distinguish us from maybe the traditional technology companies. The other thing we saw then was that we needed to be focused on uh, purely servicing our customers without any concerns and conflicts on whether our advice might impact other lines of business, whether it's on advisory, audit, tax, and so on. So that also would very much distinguish us from maybe the traditional consulting firms. And before we get an insight into the team, talk to us about the type of projects that CIA Partners works on. We have a very broad range of clients. Um, a, we work across pretty much all of the, the major industry sectors, manufacturing, retail, life sciences and pharma, technology firms, so Meta, Google, uh, Facebook and so on, uh, financial services, utilities and public sector. We have our clients range from relatively small clients that are trying to break into new markets um, outside of Ireland and our growth and innovation practice would very much work with those, all the way up to large multinational clients with in excess of 40,000 staff operating globally in every country in the world, and that's very much the case in life sciences and pharma, and, and then every client in between. So you're a practitioner-led firm. Provide us with an insight into that. Well, what that really means is that the team of people that we have have significant hands-on experience in the areas that they work in. And we believe that this is important for a number of reasons. One, it gives the client a level of confidence in the quality and the outcome they're going to get. Two, it helps to accelerate the process. So you're not relying on a team of junior people who might be uh, very enthusiastic, very bright, very energetic, but are still only building their own experience. And we can give assurance to our clients that the team that are actually going to lead them will be able to operate on a comparable level to their own leadership team and complement their leadership team with experience and expertise that would not normally be part of what they would have in their own day-to-day -day business. And of course, there have been a range of high-profile public sector and private sector scenarios where organisations have invested heavily in new systems and those systems just haven't been adopted in the fashion they were meant to be. What goes wrong? There's three components 
to um, any major change. Uh, technology is one part which usually gets the most attention. That actually is probably the least important part. Uh, we find that the most important part here is really to start with the people, what the business sponsorship is, what the vision is for the outcomes that are needed, the level of senior leadership support to drive a change through, and then tied in with that, the change management ultimately to help people adapt to change because every major transformation project results in a level of change for how people work. So that people part and change management to us is a critical part of success and a massive area that we put a huge amount of effort and expertise into. The second part is the business process, which is how you do your work, how you service your customers, and the work that we've done on digital transformation. Just think of how you interacted with your bank even five years ago. You know, there's been a massive change in the retail banking network, how banks and indeed insurance companies service their customers. More and more services are being delivered um, online, on mobile phones. And what that means in terms of changes in business processes, the whole back end process to serve customers efficiently and effectively has to be redesigned. And if that's not done well, well, then your enabling technology is only going to go and make a poor process maybe more efficient, but it's not going to improve it as a process. Al Lawrence, you're responsible for the business transformation practice within CIA Partners. What advice have you got for any business owner listening this morning that would be embarking on a business transformation project in 2024? Well, there's a couple of things. First of all is really look to understand with your customers and your clients, where do you need to continue to improve your services and how you deliver your services? So that's really the first and foremost, um, because that ultimately will drive what your transformation and what uh, level of digital transformation might be applicable. So, so that really is the first thing, because everything that we do with our clients is grounded in a business outcome. And all of our clients, whatever money they invest in a transformation program, and that would include our fees, but their own time and any other uh, costs that they would go into it, they need to see a return on that. So the first part really is looking at how you're serving your customers. Do you want to serve them more uh, effectively and reduce um, or improve customer service? Do you want to reduce the cost of service? Or do you want to have the increased capability and capacity to serve more customers or in new ways or in new uh, geographies that maybe you can't do with your current infrastructure and your current business capabilities. So that's really the driver, first of all. And based on interactions with your own clients, what trends have you noticed in 2023? Well, the most dramatic trend that we are seeing this year is generative um, AI. So everybody has heard, I'm sure, of uh, chat uh, GPT, right, which is a really interesting breakthrough around um, large uh, scale technology been applied to solve problems in a completely different way than maybe has been done in the past. And our business, we have for a long time, and again, this is going back to our own grounding in technology. Uh, we've had a strong practice in data science and artificial intelligence tools over many years. And we brought our own AI solution, see a GPT to market on the 1st of July. And we believe we were the first consulting company globally to have this. And, and what we see this is showing up as interesting to our customers is new ways that they can solve problems and new ways that they can serve their customers better. And increasingly, an awful lot of work, particularly in areas like law, procurement, uh, in starting in HR uh, and moving into finance and customer service, there are very strong cases where generative AI can be very helpful as an additional tool to deliver better services to customers at a lower cost. Do you expect that AI will become an even bigger trend in 2024 and move mainstream? Yes, is the short answer. Um, but I do think that it will go through um, an element of maturity. So probably 24 months ago, there was a significant level of attention on the metaverse. Um, you still have that in the background. That is probably still continuing to mature, 
Um, it's maybe not as headline grabbing as it was, but I could see tools like the metaverse, like uh, AI, and probably more traditional type of technology tools um, continue to mature and converge, and each of them will have their own role to play in solving different aspects of business problems. So I, I think it's definitely going to be on the agenda. There's going to be lots of hype. I do think there is probably a gap around regulating it that will need further attention. Regardless of the sector, Lawrence, what financial challenges could businesses face next year? Inflation is reducing, so that's good. Um, interest rates have gone up. That's bad. And they are probably going to stay where that is. So that's making the cost of running businesses more challenging. Um, there is definitely a challenge around um, access uh, to staff and labour force. There is probably a different style of working um, in terms of hybrid um, and depending on the sector, that's either something that's quite acceptable and companies are comfortable to continue working on um, or there is an increase to try to encourage staff to get back into the office. And I think certainly in Dublin, where um, I'm based out of, you know, there has definitely been a trend to greater traffic volumes over the last 12 months and that probably is reflective of an increase of uh, commuting again and that has its own challenges in terms of time and quality of life for staff. And then for their employees, a big challenge for their, particularly their younger employees, is access to affordable um, accommodation. And the temptation to travel to Australia and somewhere like that is a very real distraction and a very real challenge for many clients. Lawrence, finally, as we look out over the next five years, what do you think will be the difference for businesses in terms of how they use technology and what it will be used for? I think there will be surprises. I was talking to a colleague of mine yesterday who's expecting um, his first granddaughter um, early next year. And he was talking about when his oldest was born, he didn't have a mobile phone then to tell his parents and tell his wife's parents. And everybody in the office thought that this was hilarious. So that's not that long ago, uh, relatively speaking. And I think if you look at the pace of technology and you look forward, I think one thing you can be sure is that there is going to be other surprising change in technology that um, we haven't even anticipated or thought about yet. Um, I, I think the underlying cost of um, delivering more and more services on mobile phones is going to re- continue to reduce relatively for what you're getting. Um, I think the type of capability and features from AI and uh, tools like uh, CGPT um, is going to continue to surprise and, and fix more problems that would have been anticipated. And I think that the wider drive towards automation, uh, digitization, um, I think we'll continue to see at some stage a driverless car, a driverless bus, um, a driverless train. And I think that's going to also then um, open up new possibilities that people would maybe never have thought about before uh, in terms of how they work and how they deliver services. Well, if you've just tuned in, that was Lawrence Vesey from SIA Partners, and I think our listeners will definitely benefit from the insights which he shared with us this morning. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick.